Hey, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time zone you're in. We're glad you joined us. And surprise, it's me. It's not Joseph here today. Uh, he is actually enjoying some nice weather in Florida while I'm still here in the central United States. Uh, not enjoying nice weather. We have, we were supposed to get snow last night. Um, Let's just say that didn't happen. Instead, we got ice and like freezing rain. And uh, it's it's not the nicest out there. Cloudy. Um, yeah, cold. <laughs> but, you know, nicer weather's on the way, they say, for this weekend. See, in this area, people, uh, the, the weather apparently is hard to predict. And uh, so they said, yeah, you might get a few inches of snow. And I was like, great, because I like snow. But uh, that didn't happen. So... Oh, well, um, good to be here with you all, and uh, we're here to talk about Magento, Adobe, um, and preparing for that, um, getting ready for studying uh, for an exam. So uh, that is always a great thing to talk about, and I'm really excited for those of you who are getting ready for um, some exam and leveling up your skill set and all of that. Uh, so great uh, work on the study that you've already done. I hope you've gotten in there and done something. Um, if not, now's the time to do it. <laughs> time to get started on that. Uh, so before we begin, I see a couple people uh, from different places. Netherlands is probably what evening there for you. Um, where uh, where are you guys coming from? Let's uh, let's see where. Are you located? Always interested to see that. Like I said earlier, you guys probably know this, but um, the central United States. So um, right smack dab in the middle of the country. And uh, there's not much to see here, but it's, uh, it's a place that I grew up. So I like the area. So we've got Serbia, I said Netherlands. Um, I think I had seen Spain at one point. Oh yeah, nice, Ukraine, awesome. And a bunch of people from Netherlands. I like it. We've got someone from Charlotte, North Carolina. Very cool. Someone else from Ukraine. Someone from Turkey. And India. Good. Nice to have some representatives from that side of the world. Very nice. Awesome. We've got a, a number of people here from Ukraine. Man, I tell you, you guys have really been to the ringer. I, I can't even imagine... Uh, what that's what that's been like. So I'm really um, grateful you guys are on here. And uh, again, more from Netherlands. Awesome. Well, that is that is fantastic. Like I said, I'm glad to be here um, and do my best to fill in for Joseph while he's gone. He's actually down at the Meet Magento conference in uh, in sunny Miami, Florida. So, oh, cool. We got someone from Brazil and the UK. Awesome. All right, so we're already on our third week of studying for a Magento certification, and I hope things are going well for you guys. Um, I guess the first question would be if you've had your coffee this morning. I have. Um, just got started my work day just an hour or two ago, but many of you are on the other side of the world and have been already at work all day. That's good. So... Um, Hopefully you have had a good day and uh, are then winding down your day with uh, a good live stream here from Swift Otter. Um, just a reminder, but if you haven't signed up already, please do swiftotter.com forward slash challenge. Uh, that way, if you'll get your chance at winning a uh, t-shirt, something like that. Uh, so don't forget you can uh, sign up to get the challenge. And as a reminder, we're doing study groups a little bit more of a, uh, of a, of a smaller, like tight grip, uh, tight um, knit uh, group of uh, people studying. And uh, there's a, a fee for that if you want to join there. But as always, these are totally free and we'll never um, charge for that. Here, um, quick review. What test is right? I'm going to just be really brief. And uh, on this one, because it's probably a decision you have already made, but uh, remember to start with the professional one. If you're, if you haven't done the professional one and you're going straight for the expert, uh, 
might be prepared to, to be miss it the first time and have to retake it. Now, that's not a bad thing. Like, uh, personally, when I took my expert developer exam, uh, that's what happened to me. And uh, I retook it. And there's, there's value, there's benefit in being able to uh, take it, even if it's not to pass the first time. But uh, just to set your expectations so you are aware that that's a possibility. Um, if, you're, if you're going for that expert and you haven't done professional first, it's a tough one. And uh, business practitioner is really tough anyways. Uh, so that one is, is one to prepare for um, perhaps missing it the first time and then retaking it. Um, but again, you can learn from what you missed on the last one and, uh, and try to do better with that on the next one. So the main thing that I want to talk about today is effective study. That's what this really comes down to. And the challenge with taking a Mageno exam is that they are difficult and emphasize practical experience. So the best type of study that you can do is work on Mageno. That's how they were designed to be. That's the point of it. However, the problem is that it's really hard to have practical work cover the entire width, the entire Mageno application. And that's where study comes in. So if you haven't touched Mageno at all or Adobe Commerce, Adobe Open Source, then you'll have a really, really hard time just studying it and passing it. But if you have worked with it a fair amount, six months at least, maybe a year, two years, and then the goal of studying is to find those edges, those corners that you haven't worked with before. And one of the keys to study is to make sure that you look for those corners and that you address those corners, right? Because there's probably going to be areas that you've never touched, maybe you didn't even know they existed. And that's part of the benefit of the certification because that then gives you that opportunity to make sure your knowledge of the application is extensive or thorough. There's been times when I've seen uh, people have built out as custom or installed third-party modules to cover what, what, from my perspective, was a core Mageno feature, right? So if you're a, let's just say you're a solutions architect and you're working on something and, and a client says, hey, I need this feature built. And if you aren't aware of the entirety of the Mageno application, at least at a high level, then you might say, okay, well, it'll cost, you know, $15,000 to build this feature. And then you and your team go and set about working and building that. And all that's well and fine. But if Mageno has something, you could save your client a lot of money or your boss or whatever, a lot of money. And you could um, do it with something that's already been well supported, that's secure and things like that. So there's real benefit to both you, your employer, your clients, whoever it is that you're working for. There's real benefit to know how the Mageno application works. This applies to both developers and the business practitioner. Um, both exams relate to this aspect. For instance, if you're a developer and you know that Mageno has some features that are already available out of the box, you might use those in your code um, without having to reinvent the wheel. So ultimately, studying is preparing to take this exam. That's what the goal is. And you might have heard it said, practice makes perfect, which is <laughs> kind of true, but it also misses a really key word. It's perfect practice makes perfect. So practicing right makes perfect, right? If you are just studying in a, some particular ways that you are already familiar with and you're not really widening your knowledge of the, of the Adobe uh, application, then you're not really going to be boosting your skill set for preparation in, in taking the uh, difficult exam that's coming up. I play the bass. The electric bass is a little, um, I guess it's not so little, but it's a little guitar type of instrument. And uh, if I use, if I have bad technique in the way that I finger the fretboard, if I let my fingers go flying off to production, things like that, and I practice that way, it cements that as a habit into the way that I move around the fretboard. And so what's important when I practice is that I slow down, 
think about what I'm doing and work through each step of the piece of music really carefully and make sure that my technique is good and accurate. Um, and that's what we're doing here with study. We want to make sure that we are carefully examining all of the application. The problem is that we can spend a lot of time studying, but if we don't study in the right way, it won't help us pass the test. That's one of the purposes of our study guides and our courses is to make sure that all of it is covered and that you have areas that you can um, dive into if you aren't familiar with that. So study is important, it's critical, but it's also hard to do. I don't know if you're like me, but it's hard to find times that are not, when I'm not distracted in order to get some study done. And uh, so just a couple notes on that here. One is don't check your email before you study. <laughs> just, just keep it closed. Keep it closed while you're studying. Um, don't, don't open it up. And of course, don't open up Slack either. Um, that's a, <laughs> Slack is a great tool. Love it. But it's, a, it's also a really nice way to be distracted. You know, when your friend posts this cool meme of some silly creature like a squid leaning back from his desk from Slack, you know, it's got to be worth looking at. So turn off the phone, block out some time, and put your head down and study. That's the best way to do it. Um, your phone is probably a host of Slack or email or Twitter or Instagram, whatever you get notifications from, but it also probably has a way to mute those notifications. So either put it away or mute the notifications. Make sure that you give yourself space to focus. Block of time is really consistent. What, one thing that I find that, that can work for me is to schedule a block of time. Now, on my calendar, like I use Google Calendar and that can, that can be useful. However, um, it is only as good as you make it to be. It's one of those things that's very easy to skip, to, easy to miss. Uh, but if you were to schedule maybe twice, three times a week to have a dedicated uh, study session, you'll really find that to be beneficial, but you will have to guard that time. One of the things that you can do to help guard that time or, or jog your memory as well is to schedule it or do it close to another period of time that is consistent for you. If you have anything that's consistent, um, maybe that's lunch. If you, if you take a lunch break, maybe you can take some time before or after your lunch break to sit down and study. Maybe it's first thing in the morning. Maybe you find that you're, you have your best focus first thing in the morning. For me, um, when I get on in the morning, I'm, I'm usually opening up email and going through those things, but it's also my best focus time. And so that would be the best time for me to have a clear mind, nothing else, wait to open email until after I'm done with that and spend a half hour or hour, some set amount of time studying. It's hard to have it be a set amount of time, but it's also important because then that way, you know, hey, I can just get in there and do this for an hour or half hour. And then after that, I'll go about the rest of my day and we'll be good. So um, tools in order to study. Uh, this is, this is just a really important um, part of it, because in some ways it'd be like playing the bass without actually having a bass, which obviously wouldn't work. Uh, but it's easy to miss. And what I'm talking about is the is is things like Xdebug set up on your local environment. So one is you need to have a local environment in the first place. And the reason for that, if you're taking a developer exam, the reason for that is because it's important that you test out theories that you have. Assumptions are dangerous. And if you read something in a study guide and be like, oh, that's cool, but I don't understand how it works. Red flag. Hello, please take a moment to go check it out and dig into what it's actually doing. That should be a, uh, a little indicator for you that it's time to take a moment to do that. Um, Xdebug is your biggest tool with that. Just being honest, like it, without Xdebug doing um, var dump or whatever else you want to do, it's just not going to work as well. So if you don't have something like that set up, that's take your first couple hours to set it up. Um, we have a project, uh, a local environment project called DEN that we um, 
have been working on that works really well, allows different environments to be set up. It's really easy to set up. I recommend it. Take a look if you haven't already. Xdebug basically comes with it out of the box. Very easy to set up. Um, worth doing if you don't already. And a uh, for those of you who are taking the business practitioner, a commerce environment. Clear, it has to be a commerce environment. Excuse me. Um, I'll handicap your study and you will probably miss those questions that focus on commerce. So it can be hard to get that, but it's really important that you have that uh, commerce environment to work with. So um, take a minute to look there and uh, get something put together for that. So as you study, as you go through the study guide and, and Magento offers or Adobe offers uh, study guides for their certifications, which aren't so much uh the information that you need to know and it's more about the topics that are being covered go ahead and grab those um but our our study guys at swift daughter have a lot more of the information about what you need to know in order to pass the test and uh so as you read through that study guide be curious super important to ask yourself questions and that's not a natural skill at least for me it's not but it can be learned to go through a, a study guide and look for things that you aren't comfortable with. If there's something in there that you recognize as unclear to you, that is the time to uh, jump into the code. And looking at the core code is, it's hard to beat that in terms of a way to prepare for a developer uh, exam. And looking through the way that those things handled are handled, whether it is a uh, product in the way that it's saved or the way indexing works or the way that EAV works, um, those are things that getting into the core code and digging through it patiently, it takes time, are really going to help. The request flow, for instance, you know, starting off at that index.php is a great way to understand better the request flow of the Magento application. It's going to take you some time. Maybe that's not a one hour block of code. Maybe that's, I mean, block of time. Maybe that's a couple hour blocks of time or a several hour block of time on a Saturday morning or something like that. But that's going to be really helpful for you. And as you go through, pay attention to the class classes that are being called. All of those things, keep your eyes open for what you're seeing and really think about it. Don't hesitate to write notes too. Um, take time to uh, make sure that you're remembering these things. And ideally, take some time to test them out for yourself by writing code that works with those core components. Um, so maybe that's creating a controller if you haven't done that already. Maybe it's creating a router and a controller um, if that's not something that you're familiar with. And uh, with the business practitioner, get into the admin. Get into the admin panel and, and make sure you have gone through every single menu item in there. Just get familiar with the application. Spend time in your local environment or your sandbox, whatever you have that gives you access to that commerce environment. Um, think about scenarios. If you were a store owner that you would want to do, be like, you know, oh, I want to run this promotion from this for this period of time, how are you going to do that? Think about practical scenarios that you can run yourself through and set up on the front end um, in order to get a better taste of the way that the Adobe Commerce application uh, works. Use Xdebug, jumping back to the developer side of it. Use Xdebug, um, turn it on, work through different uh, requests. And um, like I said, leave no stone unturned, be thorough. Look for anything that you can that isn't in your um, area of comfort and don't be afraid to branch out um, and, and find it. So like I mentioned, writing a module can be a great way to interact with some of these things as well. Um, getting in there with Xdebug and working line by line through core code um, is a part of that, but that can help you then in building out a uh, in building out a module um, with the front end, it is important to understand the way that Knockout actually works. Magento has abstracted that a long ways, and um, it's it's a it's an interesting uh, 
framework utilization, but um, getting in there and understanding some of those uh, frameworks or libraries as they work outside of Magento is going to help you be able to use those within Magento. So just going to the Knockout website and playing around a little bit with the um, data bindings and things like that there can help you uh, with that. Going to the Require.js uh, uh, website and experimenting a little bit with that library uh, can help you learn that a little bit better. And so spending some time there will be useful in that. So when you encounter something that's an abstract concept, so what do I mean by abstract? That's something that is not like, here's a specific class, or here's a specific um, JavaScript file, or here's a specific um, page that you go to in the admin panel. It's a concept, it's an idea. And uh, when you encounter one of those, that's a great time to do some more research and online may be the best place to start. Online or in a, in a Slack, um, in our Slack group or something like that, asking someone else, what do you think about this um, abstract concept? But don't steer away from it. Make sure that you um, take the time that you need to understand that concept and um, flush out exactly what is being discussed with that. Don't study alone. This goes back to the last one that I was just talking about. Um, study is, it's hard, to be honest with you. It's, it's not an easy thing to dedicate time to. It's worth it. Um, getting a certification is a really awesome thing. It, it demonstrates to others your skill set and it increases your skill set in that process. But it's not an easy thing. So don't do it alone. Uh, make sure that you're doing it with other people, hopefully in your own company. Company, There's other people that will be able to work with you through that process. Um, but there's a lot of things that you can solve on your own, but there's a lot of things that you just don't need to. And it'll be faster for you or easier for you or better for you, for you to interact with other people and see what they are doing and what they are learning. And they might share ideas with you that you wouldn't find on your own, that you wouldn't um, naturally stumble across or things like that. Um, and they may be able to answer questions that you don't find answers to um, in other places. So um, studying in a group setting is a really important aspect of that. Like I said, we are doing study groups this year. Um, and as we've, as we've done in the past this year, there's a, a small fee and um, to be a part of that, but it's worth it to be able to have uh, access, to be able to ask questions and things like that. Um, but it's not a necessary part of getting this certification. Uh, you can certainly do it without. The other thing you can do is be a part of a larger community like Stack Exchange or the Swift Otter Slack channel. Um, and those are ways that you can answer questions that other people have. And the good part about that is that you will learn from answering other people's questions. So you benefit and they benefit from that process. So um, I'm gonna take a quick look here. It looks like uh, some people are having trouble with the sound. Let me make this adjustment and see if this helps. Uh, I just changed the sound a little bit, guys. Is this any better? I'm also going to see about my audio settings. And we'll try this as well. All right. Is that anybody? Let me know in the comments if that sound is any better. I'm sorry that you guys, uh, that's coming out a little bit here for you. Uh, I, I had internet trouble the last couple of days, and I'm hoping that is not what's affecting this, but I'm looking at this little indicator that shows me that the internet seems to be um, good. So we'll see uh, what, that, what that is. It's the quality. Okay, so the volume is all right, but the quality is not good. Um, well, I'm using my best microphone, so uh, it stutters. You know, it probably is the... Um, 
it probably is my internet then i i'm sorry about that it is uh it's been a it's been a trial for me too so hopefully it comes through for the for the rest um, of this um, live stream and yeah okay so it's it's choppy audio um well i uh I'm not going to change anything here because I don't want to take down the rest of the stream. So uh, let's just try to push through it for the remainder of it. Um, there's a Slack channel in our Slack, swiftfouter.com forward slash Slack to join that. One of the largest uh, Adobe related communities on Slack focusing on Magento. And uh, so there's a channel in there today I studied. This is a great way to articulate what you have been learning and writing out those things can be very helpful in cementing what you've already learned. This goes along with answering other people's questions and um, doing your own digging into Magento Core or the Magento Admin Panel or whatever. Um, actually sharing what you've learned, especially in a written format, can be a really, really great way to do that, um, to cement those skills into your own memory. Um, Finally, submit your scores. Let us know what you uh, what you got, what your score was, and uh, we'd be we'd love to hear from you. Always always like to know what we've been able to do um, in terms of helping you pass your test. That's that's what we love to do here is help you succeed. So that's what we're after. So um, link is pinned in the certification challenge in Slack. So uh, hit us up if you have any questions, comments, thoughts there, and with your scores. We're going to wrap up today with a uh, question and answer. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and shoot them my way. I'm watching the uh, live stream chat right here. Uh, so let me know if you have any questions. Um, but that'll be the main thing for, or that'll be all that we'll cover today regarding study. And uh, I, I hope you all are successful in uh, taking and passing your test. Um, I've, I've taken quite a few, and uh, it's always a challenge. It's always a little bit <laughs> scary, <laughs> uh, to be honest. But it is, uh, it's also good. It's very rewarding to be able to have that certification and demonstrate skills um, that you have, and uh, maybe even get a pay raise for it or something like that. So it can be a really great thing. Uh, for you to do. So keep up the good work, keep studying, keep working on this. I'm not seeing any questions come in, which is perfectly fine. You guys can reach us on Slack. Um, so we'll be around. We're, uh, we're not strangers here. We like talking with you guys. And uh, I wish you luck. All the best on the work that you're doing. Just keep up the good work, block off some time, get in the code, think, work, work in your mind. That's where this is happening. And uh, Appreciate your time, and we will uh, see you all later.